gathering an audience. Cool. So can no one can hear us? Well, no, they can hear us. Okay. They can hear us. Cool. Um, by the way, you're welcome to, um, if you want to pull up your phone or something and, and share it somewhere, um, you should see it right now streaming on the Detailing Success page, and you're welcome to share that anywhere you want to if, if you Ooh, can come for it. Thank you. Bring it up now. Hang on. I'm a little slow. Oh, you're good. There he is. Hi. Hey, Rennie. You look extra pretty today. Do I? Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I got up to some time to do my makeup. And do my hair up to Where's the... I'm, I'm a little... Where's the thing I can share at, dude? You were saying, where's it at? On the website? Oh no no! I was just saying, like if you if you went to Facebook itself, you oh, would find oh, it. Oh okay, we're good, we're good. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you'll just you'll just see it streaming on our page on Facebook, and you're yep. welcome to share it from there. Yeah, I'll be back in two minutes, guys. I'm gonna give you a Gotcha. We're right here. Okay. Oh, I see Rip Walling. I see Jason Bruno. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, everybody. Rennie Dole Podcast. I'm here with Chris. Got a special guest we'll talk about here in a second. I'm going to take care of some biz first. Today's really cool because uh, we're going we're gonna to have a uh, old buddy of mine uh, met in 04 
Uh, Paul's had a opportunity to, to have a front row seat of watching the, the an entire industry. Really, you know, the detailing industry wasn't new in 04, but it was, it was, it was uh, stationary. And it was just sitting there for years and years and years, decades, and not going many places. Not been, too many people had been able to figure out uh, the key to, to break it open. And now, you know, we've got a front row seat to seeing many people, you know, doing really, really well in the industry. But before we introduce Paul, what we do, good morning, Chris. Good morning. I'm here. What's on the shirt today? Oh, on the shirt today is, let me get things situated. This is a uh, a bug. He's at, it's at, it's at the oh, beach. Cow bug. Bug at the beach. Bug. There's kind a really, hard, to, there's hard a really, to see. Let's see there. Yeah, there we go. That's better. A really nice red and white one around the corner from us, literally 100 yards from us. And it is cool. And the guy shows it, and it's really it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. We've had – I'm taking off for uh, Southern Utah here in about three hours. Are you going to go do that today? Yeah, I'm going to go do that today. I think Boomer and I, I'm going to take Boomer along. We're going to take the uh, the camper right there. It's all pretty much loaded. It's got to put some water in it. And uh, we're going to take off, and we'll either be home tomorrow night or Friday afternoon, one or the other. We don't know. You know, so we're just going to well, take cool. off, have a good time, go see my dad. Um, we had a big and boomer. Boomer knows your dad, he won't like try and take his fingers off or anything. No, he'll, he'll he, boomer doesn't like too many people. <laughs> you know, you're one of the rare ones, you know. He, uh, yeah, last night a dog charged at the other dogs and he decided he wanted to kill them all. So, <laughs> yeah, he's almost 14 and just he's crazy. It's awesome though. Um, and so we had a really crazy weekend as we had a great group here, but not only do we have eight really cool people here in big bear we had uh we had nearly 70 70 students across the country for our one day extreme at all our training centers so is that cool? yeah seven uh seven training centers this past weekend we had a, a training on saturday with all of them and uh you know on average um what's that an average of 10 at each location but some locations were higher than others but a total of about 70 uh detailers went through training this weekend cool certification so, and just knowledge and it's that's one of the things paul and i've seen a big difference in you know in our time together as friends is uh you know and he's gone into another a whole nother format we'll get in that in a second but um this next weekend we get i get to go on saturdays to one day trip i get to leave big bear at 3 a.m and i'll be back about 9 or 10 p.m that night but it's a one day trip up to stephen chin's uh east bay uh he's uh the supplier one of the longest uh uh he goes back his family his mom and dad started distributing pns problems uh problems product <laughs> way back in oh, product problems same thing yeah, exactly. <laughs> they they started to take and distribute um you know you ever see something and i just there's a i put up a note up here and it said take take look at heater problem uh and i read problem god add kicking in jesus <laughs> be something you read it you know glad i didn't read the other note diane left for me because that would have been embarrassing um so but you know it it, it steven and his family is his parents go way back with pns and so we're going to go up there they're just opening up a new store uh right next door to to the factory so it's really cool so we'll be up there this yeah week. It's, a, it's it's attached it's kind of it's kind of a factory store but with a you know not quite connected that way Right. Yeah. But a long, long, long time, you know, distributor, one of the longest in, uh, in PNS history. So it'd be pretty cool. And then we've got a busy month this month is that we've got two five day trainings. We had to add a little bit in there because we're so we're booked up until July. And so we wanted to, you know, a lot of people wanted to get in before summer started. So we, we doubled up and, uh, added some more yep. into it. We've got a, we got a busy time. We got, uh, it's cool. It's cool to see people uh, moving forward. So, with that is uh why don't you do a uh a little introduction and then i'll do a personal introduction chris how's all right that? well um <clears throat> this guy this guy down here at the the center of your screen is uh paul and paul am i gonna butcher your last name is it apollonia very good no you did not butcher it congratulations I, I it. dude <laughs> all right well there you go um you know paul like rennie said paul's been around the detailing industry for quite a while um, but currently, uh, his main focus is actually on, uh, being an eBay seller. So he's been involved with eBay since about 2001. 
And he's kind of turned that into a education opportunity where he specializes in working with uh, businesses to turn excess inventory into cash using eBay. And he's also a trained, um, related to that, he's a trained education specialist and he's had that title since what, 2009? Yes. So, and um, <clears throat> he teaches eBay selling techniques in not only the classroom, but in small group settings and even in one-on-one uh, -on -one settings. So that's that's kind of what Paul's expertise is these days, but he has a, uh, a detailing background that I don't know much about. So I'm, I'm excited to learn how that all fits in too. Well, we're going to okay. get into this. Now it's my turn to brag about him. And so we go back. I went to my first trip, and Paul and I were talking to, about this at Mobile Tech this year of when it was. And so Paul and I, my first Mobile Hut Tech show was in 2004, and that's when him and I met. And uh, our group of friends, so Paul and I struck up a friendship, you know, naturally. This is this is before Facebook, you know. Uh, we, didn't have, we didn't have social media. We had some old, old time, you know, um, you know, S, uh, uh, Morse code level. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it really Morse code level, you know, groups on on uh, in forums and stuff back yeah. then. But it wasn't near as sophisticated as it is now. And so Paul and I kept in contact later in 06. Uh, Paul and I are back there, but we didn't know we were going to meet additional friends from all over the country that we all had one thing in common was detailing and it really i always say that 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 group of people you know we really started taking and it grew um other manufacturers reps you know came into it um i mean just detailers from all over the country all over the world and paul was part of that initial you know movement so it uh it's pretty cool to have him on and to see that he kind of went a different direction but he's kept his is 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 his fingers on the pulse of detailing this entire time so much so that he goes to events still and so forth and plays around so we'll, we'll let him kind of explain you know where he was back then and what you know where what is what is what is detailing kind of this today just the, the reader's digest version because we're going to jump into i've got a lot of questions for him on on liquidating assets not only liquidating but finding stuff i've been an ebay shopper just recently in the last year made a what i call a significant purchase on eBay, but um, I even bought a car. So, matter of fact, if you look back in that far off block, you can't see. Oh, it you can't block. see it right now. We found the Chevelle uh, on eBay. Uh, our oldest daughter did, and we didn't end up buying it through eBay because of a long story I'm going to now. But it was located on eBay, and so something else in the shop that's important to me was also located on eBay. So, I'm really interested in in in, in finding out more and asking some questions. But in the meantime. Paul, go back, explain to yourself. You you introduce yourself now, and then where where you were back when we met, and kind of where your detailing is, and then we're going to roll into where you're at today. Okay, cool. Hey, I'm Paul Apollonia, Mount Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you so much, Randy. Man, this means the world to me, dude. Man, you are you're the best, and you too, Chris. You're not bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a real quick recap on where I came from or was uh, i started detailing back in way back in 98 i was working in an it job had 22 years experience it work so i was making some freaking decent money to be honest with you so i'll be honest with you i'm an open book i left that job with not a whole lot of savings in the bank which is mistake number one and uh, i did that part-time while i was working and then i took it full-time in 98 so i left my job in June of, of, of 98, my wife totally supported me. I've got the super supportive wife. She's just incredible. And you know, um, I did it. Real ahead. quick, we have something in common. I got my start in detailing in 98 also. Oh, there we go. Uh, the, cool. The, the, the difference was I didn't have a career already. I was in college. Oh. But uh, but yeah, that's oh, where cool. I started detailing cool. cars for somebody in Salt Lake City. Well, cool. here's the other ironic thing. I actually launched Attention to Details in 98. <laughs> Are you serious, dude? Yeah, I sold my. Oh wait, but wait, I, I had sold my original company back in the '80s and got out of it, and then we, and then I, and then we formally, we formally formed uh, ATD in '98. Uh, wow! But did you run your business out of a Ford Escort for a while? No, I don't I think so. My business, uh, I, no, out of a Ford Bronco at first. Uh, yeah, so not not. Yeah, it was uh, interesting. Never mind. I'll take the Bronco. Yeah, they, that's okay. yeah. It was you know unloading everything, but 
So I did a part-time, <clears throat> was doing really well part-time. I hooked up with a body shop down the street and I was going there after work. Actually, I was doing really, really, really well when I was doing a part-time. So I took it full-time and was doing good. Still in the Ford Escort for a month or two. Got a van, got um, more clients. So I'll be honest with you. Um, and again, I'm an open book. When I started being self-employed, I just thought, eh, people will come to me. Uh, no, they don't. Last time I checked, and, and and that was mistake number one. It's 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 really hard being self-employed compared to getting that check every two weeks and really not doing too much and still getting paid sometimes. But got the business going, got it rolling. I um, got a van, got another van after that. Just went through a series of vans. Uh, all my work was mobile. Uh, I had a, a pretty good clientele at some uh, some office buildings, a lot of lawyers' offices and everything I hooked up with. Uh, big thing is networking. I know Rennie pushes that big time. I joined as many networking groups as I could and um, was trying to get into higher end detailing. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I was just doing what I could to get by, to be honest with you. Um, a, lo <laughs> a lot of the times I wasn't in a real good place, and Rennie knows that, and Jim Gogan knows that, and I. I drove you guys crazy with, with just not being in a good place in my head. Um, it was it was hard. I don't think I was ready to be self-employed, to be honest with you. So I, I took the business, ran it until about 2008, and then 2008 just just clobbered me. Just it, it just the economy just it just killed me, to be honest. With you. I lost a lot of clients. There were a lot of guys coming in doing doing a low low grade work, and, and I, I just lost a lot of clients. So I finally shut the business down in 2010. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. It was kind of weird. It was dying, but you know, like a caveman thing, you take it, drag it home. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And I finally shut it down. And in the meantime, before that, I was obviously, I was doing eBay on the side. And a friend of mine was going, you need to do eBay more. You need to do eBay more. So that's how I got started doing that. I started doing consignment for him, which I do a lot of consignment for people now. People downsizing, uh, helping businesses out, like Rennie said, like Chris said liquidating their old uh, assets and stuff. So I put the detailing aside, but I had some hardcore customers that loved me and I still have these customers today. And I tried to scare them away with raising my prices to ridiculous rates. <laughs> and they keep on coming back. Uh, one of my favorite customers is a gentleman that lives down in a private community. He has, he doesn't really take great care of his cars. He has a Lamborghini and other high end cars. He calls me out every couple of months to wash them and they're really bad. And um, I said to him, I was shutting down a business and he goes, okay, that's great. So we can do my cars next. And I said, well, I'm, I'm stopping. He goes, what will it take you to come out here and do my cars? I'm going, hmm. So I just keep on raising my prices with him and he just keeps on calling me back. So I have him and a few other people that I do, but I don't really advertise the detailing anymore. So, um, but uh, then I got into eBay, uh, took that full force, full steam ahead. Because I really love, I I really got the self employment thing figured out by then. It it it, it took me a couple of years, but I really got it figured out. I love the freedom that it offers me, to be honest with you. So I'm not stuck to a nine to five job. So I took to eBay. I got trained. I went to some uh, training programs eBay was offering. Got into doing consignment for people. I love doing consignment. I still do that today. Um, I do a lot of parting out of appliances. I get for free on Craigslist. I'll talk about all this in a little bit on how you guys can do some of this stuff. And and I do a lot of training. I love training people. I used to love training people in person, but that's been taken away with this COVID thing and everything. So I do a lot of training. Okay, we got, we, got a, we got a war going on. COVID's gonna disappear real quick now. Yeah, well, it's it's almost gone here. It's, it's, we don't have any mask, anything going on right now. So yay. Um, and uh, and I do, uh, and I also run the Raleigh eBay meetup group. We meet once a month, second Thursday of the month at three o'clock. So that's basically me in a nutshell, I think. That's cool. So you know, I think I, I think Chris said it best, and, and we're, ha we're we've got it going on here. I think every every technician doesn't matter from what industry you're in, is that you buy stuff that you later either you don't prefer it, it's not working for you, um, you know, it's something new came out that you like a little better. Um, we've all got access, you know, especially we'll, let's talk about in the detailing industry, maybe the window tent, maybe PPF, um, you know, we've got products is, are we, are we, in my mind, I've always wondered, you know, you've got a partial bottle. Does that stuff sell? 
I don't know about a partial bottle, but if you had like full bottles of stuff, yes. Um, what are the in your, what I was asked leading up to this with you, I talked to a couple of people, you know, for instance, we test products out, you know, and when I say a partial bottle, you know, it's 80, 90 percent. What if you bought okay. What if you had, you know, 10, 10 partial bottles like that? Is there value to that? And would people buy? There probably is. And if you would state in the listing that, you know, you were testing these, you know, these products, you don't have to give your name or anything, but say, you know, you were testing these for the manufacturer and these are just what's remaining and they're still fresh and they haven't been frozen or whatever, you know, I mean, what whatever mm -hmm. makes the lifespan long. I don't see why not it's just label, you know, just say use products. Right. That okay. would work. We've got because, you know, every, I think everybody's got, you know, probably cabinets full of or at least shelf full of stuff that they just don't use much anymore. Um, right. Reasons. So, you know, it's always sitting. It's it's there. And then and then on the side. Uh, so equipment, same question to, to you is, you know, let's let's take, you know, you have a polisher and let's say that, you know, something new comes out or you're just getting to the age to where you're a professional. And you want something that's, you know, not going to go down on you. Uh, if the tool still works, is there a market for it? Yes, there is. Really? There's even a market for those. Remember those, uh, gosh, I just forgot the name of it. The big polisher with the two handles on it. Yeah, yeah. Gym polisher. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had one of those. Those yeah, will work out. Too. Matter of fact, I just saw, I just saw a video. So one, one of our, our Team Double Black. Uh, members just showed a video of somebody doing something stupid with a gym polisher in modern days. And I was like, oh, man, you got to be kidding me. Back to, we just went back to 1968, you know. It's it was a workout, man. Crazy. So what do you see? You've been around detailing. And so what do you see as an opportunity for detailers with, with stuff that they've got on their own, you know, that, that's there? What, what happens do you see that could turn into a little a side money? Well, I've seen just when I was at Mobile Tech, a lot of guys with the flex polishers. Now that they went to the battery operated ones, have the corded ones, and they're and and they're looking to you know unload those on on a platform. And and they're uh, you know I know somebody that has a whole bunch of them. He he pulled me aside and he goes, I've got at least four or five of these that I'm using the battery operated ones now. So I really don't have a need for the corded ones like I did before, and I like to sell a few. So I think as we go more into the battery operated equipment you can still sell that quartered equipment because people are just starting out. There's some people that just like quartered equipment compared to battery operated equipment and stuff like that. So now next, the next big question going into is that, um, you know, a lot of people will start out mobile, you know, I mean, I, every one of us did, right. That's on the call right now. And I think it's a, the most popular way to start out in, in the industry. So um, mobile, uh, mo mobile systems, you know, I see a lot on, I cruise Craigslist every once in a while, and it kind of shocks me that people wouldn't kind of put it on. And maybe they are, but I don't see near as many new systems on eBay as I do on Craigslist. And I think eBay is a much better platform for that than Craigslist. So, what what's your what's your feelings on that? And and is there a different? And is am I wrong in thinking there's a? I think it's safer on eBay, um, and I and I think eBay spooks people, but I've, I've been somebody that's made a lot of purchases on eBay. I think right. there's a defense there too. You know, I think that you're not going to get scammed as easy. So right. those things. Well, there's two, obviously I think eBay is better because that's what I sell on, but um, there's two layers of security with eBay. There's eBay security coming in for your payments and, and, and cash going out. And then there's also what used to be PayPal, but they don't use PayPal anymore. They're using just credit card. It's similar to like Apple Pay. You can use your credit card. You can use Google Pay, Apple Pay with eBay now, but there's two levels of security. Craigslist, there's no level of security with anything. Like somebody could Venmo you money. And I hear these horror stories of somebody Vims you the money, Venmo, yeah, Venmo's you the money. And then, they somehow pull it back out again or something. So there's a lot of scams doing it like that, doing Craigslist. I personally would do eBay and even suck up the uh, the fees that they charge. It's like um, it it all depends what, what what you're selling and what category you're selling in. But between like 12 and 14 percent, and then you know you can do local pickup. You you know you can meet somebody somewhere. They can come to your shop and pick it up. You could probably ship it using a freight, I guess, if it's a big item like that. But eBay's got a lot more security and you got a lot more users. You got worldwide access with eBay. 
that gotcha. So now going into that, so um, how do you how do you keep from getting burned? You know, so so you know you you list all the time. Somebody's listening right now. They've got I've probably got not really in the shop, but in our can you know in our storage, I've probably got there's probably 25 things that I could take and and and, and get rid of right now. Uh, and clear up a some space, but b you know get a return on that. The, the the product or the equipment's you know still got plenty of life in it. Right. It's not something. So how do you keep as a person that hasn't listed on eBay? Um, how do you keep from getting burned? Well, that's a good question. You, I would say look at their feedback. But right now, um, eBay has moved into where you could go onto eBay eBay and Google Shopping are working together. They've been working together for about the last year. So that's why when you're in Google searching for things, you'll see eBay listings because now they're they're friends. So you can go into eBay and sign on as a guest, which means you're a guest. You have no feedbacks. Um, so back in the day, you would look at someone's feedbacks and go, well, they only have, uh, you know, two or three feedbacks. Some people believe I should stay away from those people. I just sell to anybody. Um you can look at your feedbacks. You can look at how long they've been on eBay. But again, like I said, if they're coming in as a guest and it's their first purchase, like I sold something a couple months ago, a $250 item to a gentleman in Taiwan that had no feedbacks and he was a guest. And it no was problem. a good sale. He, he, he left me great feedback um, and he was happy with the purchase he got. Um, that's really kind of a tough question to answer today because it's, it's changed so much. Gotcha. But it used to be you look at their feedbacks and stuff like that. So, okay, so now at, can you – let's talk about listing something. Is that you talked about buying something, you're going to be a guest. Is the same thing true with listing something, or do you have to actually – No. Have so you have, you to, have to have a user ID, and you have to have it all set up with your credit card or your bank uh, your bank um, account information, and gotcha. then you can list things. Yep. Okay. So go, go through the kind of run-up on that. Is it very difficult? Does it take much time to do it? No, it doesn't. A lot of people now, 80% uh, of uh, eBay listings and sales are done on their phones. So uh, it's huge to uh, – you can use the eBay app both for Android and uh, iPhone. It actually works better for the iPhone. You can almost run your whole business via your iPhone compared to the Android because it just – it was the first platform they worked on. So they really got that all figured out. Um Probably as a new user or a new seller, probably would take you maybe 15, 20 minutes to create your first listing. And then once you get the handle of it, you can, there's all tips and tricks. And and I'm going to discount my training for you guys. If anybody needs any help with anything, just, you know, let me know. Um, and then there's also, uh, you need to have good photos. You can use your phone. You don't need to go buy a camera anymore. You use your phone along with the eBay app and you just merge them. You uh, you take your pictures, create your listing, and then import your pictures into your listing. So it's much easier that way now. It's gotten so much easier compared to what it was before. And again, you have security. You have millions and millions of people out there looking at your items all the time, eBay and Google. So you you, you got a huge audience out there. Well, it's funny because the last thing I purchased was about a year ago. And uh, going back nostalgic-wise is that I started my first detailing business with a, 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 a Mongoose BMX bike. And uh, I bought the bike in 1979, or excuse me, I saved up and I bought part of it. Give credit to my mom and my grandmas. They, they chipped in. I really wanted this bike. I think it was, yeah, it was 79. And so it was actually 78, Christmas of 78, going to 79. So 79, the Mongoose was pretty legendary BMX bike. Well, I bought, I bought a Mongoose. Mine got stolen. And the sentimental value of having it here in the shop because that bike towed a, a little a little cart behind it a wagon type thing and that's that's how i started my detailing business and so i want to tell you i hadn't bought anything on, on ebay in a bit it had been a few years and it was seamless it was really easy um i felt secure uh, the shipping went out so now let's talk about non you know technician base let's talk about how you've kind of built a business up around this you've got you know your your detailing came out of that you're training this but you're an active, active seller on eBay. So what what are you going out? And I think this is going to blow me away. What are you going out and looking for? What sells? Well, funny you should mention that. Uh, the mongoose, believe it or not, those old mongooses, if you can grab those somewhere, even if they're rusted, even if the parts are rusted, go on eBay and search mongoose bike parts sometime and see what this stuff is going for. Hundreds of dollars for the headset. I mean, it's handlebars. 
people give me this stuff sometimes. Um, what what do I go after? I go after, um, and this is what you guys can do. Like you talked about, I guess, many podcasts ago about getting a part-time job. And that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you don't need that part-time job. You can be selling on eBay. You can be home with your family. Maybe you go out on a Saturday and do some thrifting or go get your items or whatever. There's so many avenues you can go down to, uh, down with eBay. But what I get is I get a lot of consignment items where somebody, unfortunately, a, a spouse dies and somebody calls me and says, hey, I know somebody, you know, uh, they're a little overwhelmed and I do a lot of consignment. A consignment is not for everybody. You got to sometimes be a therapist when you go into their houses because, you know, they're dealing with stuff that somebody dies, somebody left them. Uh, they're dealing with their parents' home um, and there's huge attachment issues with items. Other avenues I go is I scan Craigslist. I created uh, Craigslist email alerts for anything uh, appliances. I do very well selling refrigerator um, shelves. Uh, I had to replace the uh, refrigerator freezer in my garage. And before I, I hold the old one out, I pulled, pulled all the shelves out and I made $245 and I paid $200 for the, <laughs> for the used refrigerator. Now I didn't make that $245 in two days. It took me about six months to make that, but it right. paid for the, it paid for the refrigerator is what my point is. Yeah, well, so I love doing parting out of things. Gotcha. That's well here for, before we move on, if you come in across anything mongoose, I want to know. Okay. Uh, because I'm seriously I'm, I'm piecing. Yeah. I've got mag wheels, mongoose mag wheels, man. I'm looking for a pair of originals, you know, seventies uh, mag, mag mongooses. Cause that's what I had on there. And I don't care what shape they're in. Cause I'll paint them root beer brown, which was the, the factory color I had. And then I've got an anodized one. Uh, I've got the anodized when I really tricked my bike out. I got rid of all that heavy stuff yeah. um, when I was park riding and um, took in. And, but I, I've been on a I've been on a holding pattern because I bought this thing during COVID and I can't get my 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 wheels I want. You know, it's just sitting there. And so first off, before we go into that, so so now, so what could you know? I mean, okay, so what are you looking for? I, it, it, it blows me up right now to go get a refrigerator, you know, new refrigerators, washers and dryers. A, it's hard to get a hold of. And then B, um, there's a waiting list. And then C, really expensive. So when you're looking right. for items, is, is, are you looking for top-notch, real high-quality stuff? Or what are, you, what are you looking for? Well, look, for dishwashers, I'm looking for Bosch. Uh, I'm looking for name brand stuff. And I kind of have a feel for, like, for like what, um, like some of the, not every Bosch dishwasher did well. There were some models that did poorly, which I learned from getting them for free and not doing my research really good and finding out that the parts aren't worth anything. Bosch's, uh, Kenmore's, Whirlpool's, any top name um, dishwasher does well. I sell the racks and I've got videos out there on my channel, on my YouTube channel on how to wrap the racks and ship them and everything. I sell the control boards. They'll, a good control board will go for probably about $85 and it takes all of probably about 15, 20 minutes to remove if that once you know what you're doing. Um, yeah. Refrigerators do good parts on refrigerators of so the shelving. Like I said, the, the drawers and all the other stuff. Um, you can even sell things that aren't working. So, uh, I'm a ham radio operator. I'm not real active, but I go to these things called ham fest, which are basically big flea markets with all these old guys selling old radios. And, um, and I pick up stuff that's not working and I sell it for parts not working. And I, I got four Cobra CVs last time I was at one and the guy laughed at me. He goes, what are you going to do for those for $5 for the whole box? I went, yeah, thank you. Cause I don't wear any eBay garb or anything. I go into there totally undercover and I took them and I sold each one for $65 a piece within three weeks. Oh, no, really. <laughs> not even working. So, so there, is, so there, 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 you do have to have some room to store stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, you got to have. Some yeah. Don't talk to my wife about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so now let's go into this. Is that um, what about? So I've gone on eBay sometimes, and what do you look for for if you're going to purchase things? How? how can, can't a can you get burned on eBay, and how do you keep from getting burned when you're buying, not selling? Well, first thing, let me say, only there's an old saying called "the riches are in the niches" in the online selling community. That means you know a lot of stuff. You have hobbies. You have you know the detailing industry you're in. Really, you want to really be selling at first stuff you really really know, 
like me with the ham radio stuff, me with the dishwasher and appliance stuff, it's over time I've learned that stuff. You don't really want to go out and try and create another niche for yourself. So sit down and think about, hey, what are my hobbies? What do I know? If I have a job, what is my, you know, am I into computers? You know, can I sell computer parts? Um, now, as far as buying on eBay, just you have to look at the feedbacks. Um, now, if you see a few bad feedbacks, like, like, like everything, we all go into a big box store and say, I'll never go back. But then we kind of go back after a while because we need something. So don't judge every bad feedback that, you know, some people are crazy out there and <laughs> it just, they, <laughs> they just like leaving bad feedbacks or bad reviews. You've seen it, Rennie. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> we just, we just had a, we just, I, I see it. I call it, you know, character or brand assassination. You guys go out like snipers and just, you know, start, you know, I have, I mean, for me to leave a bad review on something, it takes extraordinary uh, bad service, but for me to bad mouth a product, it's never happened. You'll never yeah. go in. You'll never find me uh, bad mouthing a, especially in our industry. You know, I just don't go there because somebody worked real hard for that product, and they love it. And just because I don't, you know, I I don't leave. I see these people. You know what I think when I see somebody mouthing off about things is you just you don't even know it, but you've already failed in business mm -hmm. because you don't you your personality. If you're so open to be able to do that is 80% of the population is not going to like you. They're not going to like doing business with you. And right. it might take some time to get to show that off to people, but it's going to happen. So yep. that's cool. So so I took some notes, and I want to go over these real, real quick, is that not ready for, for a full-time entrepreneur. You said that. You said back in 98, you weren't quite ready for it. And I kind of wanted to hit these things and then get both of your guys' input. So I tell people the first thing, one of the things you just did that I put down when I was when I was uh, when we were talking, you got to, and everybody thinks they know how to hunt. Listen, is that my brother? I'm not a hunter. You know, um, it's not I'm against hunting. I just don't hunt. My brother is a world class hunter. He's been an outfitter and everything else. That guy can go out and get into the elk or get into the deer in nanoseconds. Now, I've gone out and tracked for him. You know, I'm a good tracker, um, but you've got to learn as an entrepreneur. There's hunting skills that you need. You, it's not going to be filled to dreams. And if you guys are young and don't know the movie Filled to Dreams, build it and they will come. And all the old ghosts of, of yesterday, they ain't going to come, man. You're not going to, no. you know. So you got to learn to hunt. You've got to learn to self motivate. Um, you know, there's days I fight extreme laziness. You know, and yesterday was a real productive day personally and business wise for most people. Probably yesterday I probably outperformed ninety percent of. The, the, the people um, not listening because our listeners are badass, but 90% of those people that call themselves entrepreneurs, I had a lazy day and I probably outperformed it because um, the, my demands on myself are, are pretty high. Um, so you've got to learn to self-motivate. You can't go into this with any debt, man. If you're going into debt, you got to keep a side gig that make this, make this, make your business a side gig, get, get a regular, paying job until you can get that debt gone, you know, and then I want, I want your guys input on all this and then know your stuff. You've got to be, we're in an age to where, you know, we, we had to earn while we, we, we had to learn while we earned back in the day of detailing. It's, I won't say it's impossible these days because anything's possible. And if you're, if you're an extreme person uh, with extreme talent and extreme uh, people skills and extreme um, ability and extreme self, self, self uh, motivation, you can do it, but that's rare. In today's world, detailing is complicated. Detailing is not what it used to be. Detailing, there's too many people that know what they're doing. Competitions, there's too many good people out there. I never thought I'd say that because there used to be a lot of terrible people out in our industry. Not terrible people, just not skilled people. Right. And so you got to know your numbers and make 100% positive you are profitable in every service that you do. Is is a lot of people offer all these? They got a, it's like a restaurant. You go into a restaurant, they got this menu that's ten pages long, and I'm like, oh my god, how much of this stuff are they not making a dime on? You know, it's right. too complicated. Is that people um, people do that? And so then, lastly, so can I get your input on that? And then I'm going to go back over. I got one last question for Paul in regards to that. you guys got any input on those things I just kind of talked about. Well, hey, you know, I can I can relate to uh, to Paul being a little a little too early, I guess, to the entrepreneur thing. wasn't quite ready 
back in 98, you know, I kind of feel like I went through the same journey a little bit. Um, I do, I do tend to feel like, you know, have, if I were to really dive back into it again, the second time around, I would do a lot better. Um, you know, just from what I've learned, even just the past few years working alongside this guy, you know, yeah. um, that, that's definitely helped. So I've been exposed to a lot of different things, but I think, um, you know, even Paul, right. He, he started out detailing, but now he's still an entrepreneur on the eBay side. You know, he figured it out. He learned some things. He just happened to apply it to a different industry the second time around, you know? Absolutely. So it's, it's Paul, when you mentioned those things, it kind of, it really resonated with me, you know, on, on those things of not being ready because right. I'll be honest, my first entrepreneur journey, I was lucky. I, 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 I was lucky. And the reason why I was lucky is I had personality and um, t- that was it. I didn't have skill. I wasn't an entrepreneur. I called myself an entrepreneur. I, I wasn't. I was an apprenticed entrepreneur. There's a big difference. You know, well, back then, back then, I think he had hair too. That might have helped. I had hair. I was a lot, <laughs> dude. And it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 and thank God he attracted Diane back then. She was <laughs> um, but no, it, it's, I was that, that first, that was way before Diane. Back in the early, early, early days, I just, I, I really, I did. I hate to say it. It could have gone really bad looking back. I mean, I had, and a lot of people say, well, and there's people doing it. There's young people right now doing the same thing I did. I just wish I would have known just use it as a side hustle for a little longer and get a little more money put away and then and then get a little more knowledge in your head. Doesn't take long, just a year or two, you know, just doesn't take long. Even when we launched in 98, I kept a, a part time gig in the wintertime. Yep. You know, for, I remember for that seasons, you know, for three seasons. And so I think that's 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 interesting. Now, consignment. Let's say for a second that, you know, let's say Chris and I go through the shop in the next couple of months and we've got all kinds of goodies that we just don't have time. For anybody listening, would you be interested in talking to them about putting some of their stuff on consignment? Paul, did you hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Of course I would. Um, <laughs> I'm worried. I had, um, um, I do have long distance people. They ship me things. Um, and I do it that way. My percentage is 50-50 split uh, to the first 100, and then it goes down from there 40%, and it keeps on going down. It's, it's a, but most items go for anywhere from, uh, you know, not much to up to about 100. But, yes, yes, I've done that. In fact, I've got a guy that's going to ship me some of those buffers we talked about earlier that I'm right. going to be doing for him. Yes, yeah. most definitely. I love doing consignment. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So with that, man, wow, what a well, – I, cool. I have a good, a good question real quick on the yeah. – the taxes side of yes. Um, Bill, no, Bill, Bill sent Bill that. Quinn, Bill Quinn asked about taxes. So, you know, I'm sure there's a right and a wrong way to handle that. Paul, can you right. dive into that a little bit? Okay. I'm not an accountant. I don't, but, uh, but I do play one on TV. No, it's just, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's that hard, man. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, eBay collects sales taxes. eBay handles your sales tax for you for each state. But there may be other taxes you may have to pay, like if you're buying items at a thrift store and stuff like that. So talk to your accountant about that part of the taxes. But as far as sales tax, eBay handles all that. That's cool. That's good that's to know. From, yes. Yeah, that's something new they're doing. They've been doing it for the last year and a half, I think. So well, you look. Had to, right. you know? Yeah. Everybody's trying to get a wave with, without paying taxes. I, I, I Look, I don't do cartwheels when I got to pay taxes. I hate it. Sometimes I owe a lot of money. Sometimes I don't. But just pay your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> just, you yeah. know, I like nice roads. You know, I like nice roads because I don't like I don't like roads to, to well here in California they don't use well. Them that. But just pay your taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. So hey, Paul, I want to thank you for uh, for taking and being a part of this. This is really cool. So before we sign off, is that you know follow us at Detailing Success on Instagram uh, and Facebook. Um, Rennie Doyle uh, on Instagram. I'm tapped out friends wise on uh, Facebook. Um, and then uh, follow Paul. Paul, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can uh, just uh, if you want, you can email me at Paul, period, and my last name, A P O L L O N I A, at gmail.com. I'm on YouTube under my name, uh, Paul Apollonia, and that's on YouTube. I also have uh, a teachable site that. Uh, 
that I can send you links to if you guys like, uh, that I have a teachable course on how to part out a dishwasher. It's very affordable. It goes step by step, shows you what parts to part out, which parts not to take. And I also have the uh, have the big meetup group if you want to guys want to join that. And all my rates are discounted for you guys. Just tell me you you heard me on this uh, podcast, and I will give you guys a discount. Man, I mean, you guys have been so great to me over the years. And Rennie, thanks mm -hmm. so much for everything you've done for me. I, I I know I keep on saying that over and over and over again, and you guys are tired of hearing it. But man, you mean the world to me, and so does everybody else, and even you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till I have to work with them every day. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. <laughs> I put up uh I did put up your website, Paul, so everybody could see it. Um it's okay. Just, uh, it needs help, but okay. <laughs> hey, you know, if, but it's still it's, a, it's still a good resource and a good way for people to mm -hmm. be able to reach you and contact you. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, everybody listening, I think you know, Paul's been an inspiration because he's just figured it out how to keep on doing his own thing. And I really love the fact, and, and I want to I want to give tribute to Paul right now. Every time I'm around Paul, Paul is so appreciative, and he's always paying respect to people around him. He's always giving thanks. He's always, even when he doesn't need to, he does. And I think that's such a class act, especially if I bring cigars. If I bring cigars, then he really sucks up, you know? Um, <laughs> we've had some great times to throw the cigar. Here, hey, Paul, here's the deal. We're... This, this, this bubble tech with two of the older guys there, all those wussies went to bed. Paul and I are out there, what, two in the morning? Yeah, it's right. in the rain. In the rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the rain. Just It's colder than hell in Florida. Believe it or not, it does get cold down there. And we're out there. We just had a ball. We sit out there until 1.32 in the morning. It's great. You know, just, just, uh, just, just having a ball, just catching up and stuff. And it just goes to show you some of your best friends can come from industry. You know, it's just pretty amazing. So. Hey, make sure to follow them. Chris, you want to give your information out too? How do they follow you? Oh, me? Well, let's see. Um, Instagram, it's Chris Woolman oh. underscore detailer. And, uh, but, you know, other than that, just uh, they should be following Detailing Success and then they'll find us that there way. There you go. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Follow, That's right. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram too. Same name, all squished together. Paul right. Apollonia, Instagram and Facebook too. Hey, my takeaways on this is hey, stay innovative, stay creative. And if at all possible, make your own gig, man. I mean, take the time doing it, but I don't care what it's in, but go out and create a business, create a life. You know, it's not very, uh, it's back when we met 20, 20 some years ago, you know, it, uh, we, we never figured that, you know, I didn't know if I lived this long, you know, and that, you know, honestly, it's Chris is driven with me. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to take him flying. You know, it's going to be real fun. So are you shaking his head? Yeah, you are. So, hey, Paul, thanks a lot. Everybody, If you uh, please share this uh, if you liked it. Leave a comment. Also, if you have any topics uh, or somebody that you think should be on the program, uh, send us, a, send us a, uh, an email. And let us know. Probably the best one is going to be chris at detailingsuccess.com. If you got a personal comment to me, it's rennie at detailingsuccess.com. Other than that, hey, I'm going on to the uh, Justin Lobato podcast right after this here in uh, – Yep. In about uh, 20 minutes, less than that, in about 15 minutes. We're going to be over on that podcast. So come over and check that one out. So take cool. care. Happy detailing, Paul. Once again, thanks, buddy. It's always good to see you. Bet. You, you take Man, care. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, buddy. Right. I'll see you. We'll see yep. you. Thank